Hello and welcome to Culture Crew Podcast, episode eight. We have Liberian shoe designer Sean Collins here with us. Sean, welcome to Culture Crew Podcast. Hey, what's up? Thank you guys for having me. Yeah, so we are here today. We are recording from DC. Um, are you based in the DMV? Um, or I know it seems like you have a lot of in, like New York influence. So what's the story there? Oh uh, yeah, I'm um, from Liberia. I was raised basically in New York and Queens. And um, I just recently came to DMV, and uh, I actually live in Gaithersburg, Maryland, mm -hmm. but I do a lot of business here in D.C. and, you know, Maryland. Okay. Um, how long were you in Liberia? Uh, I was in Liberia until I was, like, four. So, you know, so, like, when a war really broke out again, I guess, that's when we came back over here. And you went to New York? Yeah. Okay. So, um, how'd you get into fashion? Um, since I was, like, uh, young, you know, in New York, being in New York is a big fashion um, seeing, you know, even from like if you're like elementary, you still have, everybody keeps up with like the new Jordans, new kicks. So, um, you know, as far as me developing, wanting to develop my own brand, I was like 13 or 12 before I came down here. Um, and, you know, my mom used to always get us like the every everything. And, you know, we, she didn't really have the means to. So I just looked down at my sneakers. I was like, if Jordan can make a sneaker, then I can too. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I, from there, I didn't jump straight into footwear. I had, like, uh, T-shirts, and that's how I started out from. I would start painting on them, and then it would later on elaborate, like, after year after year. I learned something, or I failed at something, you know, and keep going from there. Okay, so you're like an artist by trade, I guess. Yeah. Um, okay, you said painting on shirts. Uh -huh. um, I'm, a, I'm, I'm really artistic as far as like uh, um, creative direction. Uh, I used to make designs from like painting, drawing, sketching, like computer graphics. It's just a whole range, and it's all you elaborates in different things. Mm -hmm. So how do you think, um, like, I know you said you left when you were four, but how has um, Liberia um, and just, um, like, shaped what you're doing in your business um, and um, in terms of, like, Liberian support? Like, what like what, what do you think? Uh, uh, uh. Can you say, state that question again? So basically, um, how has Liberia shaped, how is Liberia incorporated in your business in any way and how has it shaped what you're doing with your brand? Um. You know, my parents, my grandparents, my uncles, they're all Liberian. And uh, that's a, and that within the household, it's heavily around me, you know. So from our accents, our food, to uh, our culture, everything about Liberia is still instilled within me and my family. Um, they they impact me a lot, you know, going through from, from starting off my brand to where I'm at now, just because uh, I look back, I mean, so I still have family that's over there, mm -hmm. and I look at the conditions that, you know, Liberia is still in, and for as long as, you know, since the wars have happened, you know, till now, there's still no growth, you know, it's just, I feel like there's too many impactful Liberians that could go back and restructure the, the, um, the country, you know, and I think they can do it very quickly, but there's not enough support or information out there for us to, you know, gravitate towards that. So everything that pertains to my brand, I try to make sure I somehow bring it back to Liberia. Great. Have you collaborated with any um, other Liberian artists or, um, yeah, designers? Um, I'm actually about to this year. This um, designer by uh, Crystal Williams, and she's based here, too, in the DMV. Uh, she does, like, men's suits and things like that and women's fashion dresses. So um, right now I'm... Um, currently helping her rebrand and build our website and, you know, connect with uh, other, I know it's a lot of celebrity stylists, so I'm helping her get more celeb clients and stuff like that. Okay. And um, so how how did you um, get, like, all, like, the celebrity clients and how were, how were you able to build your brand? Because, I mean, you've, you've built a pretty big brand right now. Yeah. It's getting there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, little by little. But um, I... I I get, like uh, everybody likes to say like social media is like um, making people more stupid, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know the computers and everything. But if you if you know how to uh, uh, use it in the best way possible, it, it really helps you advance your overall lifestyle. So like before, you know everything I did was just local, and before Instagram came out, I was just doing everything by like word of mouth or 
by referrals from other people. And it wasn't reaching out there to the public. So when Instagram came out, <clears throat> I took advantage of it. Um, I released my first shoe on Instagram, and it was like uh, bur all burgundy and gold. You know, down here in D.C., it's big because of uh, Redskins colors. I didn't mean to do it like that, you know, but as soon as I posted it, you know, it went crazy. It went viral. And, you know, uh, stylists came to me. And when I started out, I didn't know how to respond to them. I didn't know how to give them packages. I didn't know, like, so it was kind of overwhelming. So, like, uh, when I first started out, I was giving shoes everywhere and without checking background or checking, you know, who's actually able to get to certain contacts and how to actually word the things that I'm saying. And sometimes I lost business and sometimes I gained business, but I had to restructure myself and get people behind me to, you know, help me handle those things. So my first shoe got me all those people. Mm -hmm. And then from there, people got me in contact with other people, with other people. And, you know, I just, I have a, a wide list of people I can send to that, you know, I know for sure they'll get my package and, you know, give me content. But if you if you look at my uh, Instagram and stuff like that, I'm not really focused on the, the celebrities. I could care less for them, really. Um, it's just that when I need a high-end purchase, mm -hmm. you know, I would give it to a stylist to, so they can give it to their celebrity. Mm -hmm. um, and that's, that's the connection I have. But as far as the, for me to have them marketing my brand, I don't want people to know my brand as, uh, oh, Sean, he had his shoes on, like, Migos, and, you know, that's why people follow me. I don't want that. You know, okay. I want people to respect the brand and like the creative version. So right. I don't post people. But. Right, but Migos has one your shoes? No, no, no. Oh, okay. No, 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 um, and I know you don't want to focus on the celebrity aspect of it, but, like, who are some of, the, like, your... Um... Uh, Diddy. Um, I have... Uh, uh, I started off... The first celebrity I ever had was... Um, Gerd Cervante Davis, and he's a boxer. You know, when he started off, he was still here in Baltimore, and he was still small. But I just reached out to him, and, you know. Um, so from Gravante, it, he helped me get a few other people, like uh, Christina Emilian, um, Christina Emilian and Lil Wayne. And uh, uh, their stylist helped me get in contact with a rep from Rebrock. And um, that, stylist, that guy helped me get um, uh, Michelle K. Michelle. Mm -hmm. um, and from there, it's, it's just, it's a lot of people, you yeah, know. Um, I have Rihanna, I have Beyonce, um, I have uh, Trey Songs, Chris Brown, uh, Game, um, and yeah, that's, yeah. that's the, the most I can think of. Right, of head, so when, the, um, when, you're, when you first started doing it, it was male shoes. Yeah. Um, so when did, you, um, when did you start launch your female line? I... You know, I don't know if it's the like being thing that's in me, but when when I started the uh, my uh, Instagram, I was only following females. You know, as the <laughs> normal guy thing to do. <laughs> so I was only following females. You know, so I didn't I didn't care less about the guys. But then I I realized because I did that, my whole audience was females. You know, and you know they'll come and they'll show it to their 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 guys friends, mm -hmm. and then I'll get you know that. But mostly they were females. So I was like. I gotta switch things around. So my second and third shoes, they're more unisex. That's when I changed um, my sole from a more aggressive male shoe um, sole to a, like a more casual unisex, like Vans um, sole. Yeah. And so you know, people, anybody can wear. You know, both sexes can wear. Shoe. Right. Yeah. Um, so where do you? So the, okay. So the, the the design aspect of it, definitely you. Now when we get into production. How's that going? Like, who's doing it? Um, is it? Yeah, when I, when I first started out, um, I was, like I said, I didn't originally start from uh, shoes. Mm -hmm. When I first started out, it was clothing. And I would get my T-shirts wholesale from, like, um, wholesale websites. Um, and uh, it will be here. The, those uh, T-shirt websites would be here. And <clears throat> from there, I was like, it's taking too long for me to paint each one. So I would have them, I would paint one and have them, I would, copy that picture, have it sent to them, and they'll print it out for me. That's, that was the second step I was doing. And that took too much from, from uh, the, like, the creativity. that It wasn't there, you know, because it's not me actually painting there, you know. So I didn't want to do that anymore. So I went to screen printing, to direct the garment, to embroidery. It's just whole different channels. But as I later 
um, and matured, it, my my uh, overall con- understanding of fashion grew. You know, so it went from just graphic tees and streetwear to more like I want to produce casual, you know, high end gear. You know, so from there, I, I what my creative my creative understanding of uh, fashion. You know, um, I wanted to build garments from the ground up. So I want to have different colors, different layers, different concepts, you know, textures and everything like that. So um, I outsourced those those uh, garments. So I, when I started off, I went to use Chinese manufacturers and they would produce my products. But when I would get them back, you know, there would be certain things that would be off with the fabric or off with the pattern. or something. There would some, always be something that's off. But that's because you're not there to actually feel and, you know, give them direction. So... Um, from there, uh, I stopped making clothes until I did some more research. And then as I continued on, it was just like everybody around me is doing clothing. And so it, it deferred me even more, you know, from, from producing clothes. So I was like, all right, well, I'm going to break it down to what are the three most expensive garments people wear. And it came down to jackets, um, denim, and sneakers. And I don't know anybody personally that designs sneakers, so... I went that route, and again, I went back to Chinese manufacturer, and like the first couple of samples I created, and they were okay, you know, but there's nothing with like what I wanted, yeah. um, and again, I had problems, you know, dealing with them, but um, I'm a web, the web developer, that's what I went to school for, and I used to work with a design agency here in D.C., and we used to have a lot of clientele, and going through there, you know, it I so happened to land a job with uh, Bloomingdale's brand um, called Level 13. And I designed their footwear, the clothing, everything, and um, got in contact with Jason Durillo as their sponsor and everything like that. So because uh, because of that and my contract, my contract states stated that as as I work with you guys, I'm also able to use your guys' factory. Mm-hmm. So, um, nice. yeah, so it, I, I it was uh, not only that I... Could I say that I produced those things that were inspired by Bloomingdale's, but I also had the opportunity to produce my own footwear mm-hmm. you know, through them. So I started, now they, they have Italian manufacturers. So now the quality is way more Yeah, better. Italian yeah. versus, trying, you know, yeah. like definitely. Yeah. So the leather and everything is like um, sourced yeah. from Italy. Yeah, everything is sourced from Italy. And, um, wow. and you know, like the quality is already there. The design... Sometimes it'll be off, you know, but at least they, I can tell them what's wrong. And they will find me all the time to go to Italy and, you know, uh, go through that new collection. And while I'll be there, I'll also be working on my own sampling and, you know, getting things done. So I was also hands-on with everything. So um, from there, you know, the contract ended. You know, it was, I was the, the collection I, for, I, for the time I was there, I released like three collections. Okay. And everything was successful. But... You know, the contract ended, and I also wanted to focus more on myself. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I left, and I have to find my own manufacturer again now. So, the one thing I... I uh, and you couldn't... Yeah. Sorry, I'm uh, sorry to cut you off, but you couldn't... Um, even though you left Bloomingdale's, mm-hmm. you couldn't use that uh, manufacturer there, like... Manufacturer? Yeah. No, no. Once, once the contract ended, so did that... That, uh, that partnership with, the, with their manufacturer. So... I had to leave and um, find my own, but I know where to source them from. So right. I had an Italian. So I'll get the products. Um, this is what I would do now, and I'll get it made in China. So I buy the the product, whatever product I need, and, from Italy. Yeah, and okay. then get it assembled in China, so my cost stays down. Okay. So and then I'll take trips from from here to. Um, sh- so, uh, I forgot how to call it, but when I see it on the paper, it's called I I pronounce it Gonzazu China, mm-hmm. but it's not it's a, it's a way different spelling, right. every pronunciation. But <laughs> we should take trips back and forth from there now, you yeah. know. Um, so I got a better way of the, structuring the design, and everything like that. But um, <clears throat> and that was that was as of late. But now you know, through through connect, like uh, I was just lurking, I guess, <laughs> on Instagram. 
and you know that's what I do. I just be sometimes reading comments. People's comments can get you, you know, plugs from you, places you would never actually, you know, be have the opportunity to do. Like yeah. a lot of times, people in, this, in, in every industry, people say it's not what you know, it's, it's who you know, know. You know. So I was just lurking, and I found this guy. His name was Rich. Yeah, <laughs> his name was Rich. I followed Rich. I was like, all right, let me see what he does. Um, he had like this custom shoe. I was like, oh, that's pretty cool. Let me see where he got his shoe from. You know, I found out, and then ends up happening to be like rich owns ubi q life and it, oh yeah yeah so it's a story it's yeah, just right here, here in georgetown, georgetown. yeah, yeah. But it actually started out in um philadelphia mm-hmm. and um he's the founder of that brand okay and i know them well i follow them on yeah, yeah, yeah they're cool um but he, he's also the founder of this brand that came out like years ago it's called goodwood and what they used to do is create like jesus pieces with out of wood you okay. know and everything like that but he owns several brands and everything so um i reached out to him i was like yeah hey uh because i'm right now i'm working on my female collection this is a long-winded answer i know no, no, go ahead. <laughs> but um but right now i'm working on my female collection is that motor, the motorsport yeah it's a motorsport collection and well that was a motorsport was a collection that there's a collaboration i did with another designer okay but um, right now, that that was separate from my from my actual collection. I like collaborating with people, you okay. know. But um, we had a, my Club Ninety Nine is the female geared um, brand, and it has like more. I don't know if you're familiar with Y Three um, and Adidas, but uh, uh, they make more. They make high end concepts that are like futuristic and. I don't see that for females, you know, as far as heels goes. Um, it's just basic heels design. So I want it to be sporty. I want it to be versatile. And, you know, that's what I'm, that's what I'm developing now. And uh, I, was, I went to Rich to see if he can um, help me with that. And he said, yeah. So when we, he, he invited us down to, to his, his space. And um, it's in Philadelphia. And that's what currently that's where I'm pretty getting my shoes produced now. Um, so we went up to Philadelphia to see Rich, and he gets inside. Inside the it's a huge factory, mm-hmm. and but it's like security after security after security clearance. <laughs> you have to go through is crazy, but it felt it's too official. legit. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. when we got back there though, um, he's like, you can't, you know, record any of this footage on this part. So when we got there, we went inside. It's just machines. You see from from start to finish, machines with. Um, in different concepts for what you can do with shoes and in there is like two Spanish guys two Chinese guys two Spanish guys like threading the actual shoes and the Chinese guys are like working on the machines to make the stuff go on but Rich is a cool dude um, when we got inside the design place he was like look this is what you need from you this is what I need from you This is, I gave him all my new designs and he was like yeah I, I like all your designs so I'm willing to help you guys you know produce them so it, it was a big 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 move you know and it came at the right time right. because i i'm tired of making trips to china <laughs> and and whatnot are you but. still keeping your production costs low because i know i mean obviously everyone knows that you know mm-hmm. china you're you know you're able yeah. to get you know a low production cost yeah. so now with it being sourced um well no or now that now, now with it being produced mm-hmm. locally um are you still able to keep those costs low, or are you going to have to drive up the price? Heck no. Nah, the price is just going to be skyrocketing soon. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, I, I still I, I still want to... I'm still going to push out brands for people that want that high in luxury, but don't really have the, the um, capital to, to get that, but... Mm-hmm. Um, but right now, I want to be I want to be a high end designer. Okay. I want to be my I want to have people understand my brand yeah. as luxury, you know. Yeah. So um, my cost right now is expensive. It's a lot more than what I was paying before. But the quality. But yeah, the quality. I, what, what what like this year I'm working on just sitting down with buyers from Barney's and Saks and Nordstrom just so I can get my brand in there. Okay. And I know a few from working with Bloomingdale's. Mm-hmm. So, but I, I've never had that product I, I felt like a hundred percent would be that quality product i present to the high-end customers so and now you're feeling like yeah so now i have the i have this like i don't know if you guys saw um on hype beast um this is louis Vir, if, do you guys know virgil arbar mm-hmm. um well he's a creative there, there's a director behind off-white um okay, yeah. that's a that's a brand yeah, yeah yeah and he works closely with and Kanye. that just like blew up yeah yeah yeah, yeah cause, uh yeah, he um, but he he helped Kanye with his his brand too. Um, but Virgil just signed a contract with um, Louis Vuitton, 
And now he's the creative director behind Louis Vuitton. All the concepts coming out now, mm -hmm. you'll see it'll be he's the creative director behind it. And um, because uh, Virgil just released some shoes, and when, when we actually went to meet Rich, ironically, he was developing a shoe that did like that was like homage to uh, uh, Virgil Abbar. Okay. You know, um, so they cut up some Louis Vuitton bag, they put it on the Jordan ones. And all you see all over is Louis Vuitton. And then Off-White, the, the collaboration Virgil Abbar just did with uh, Nike, mm -hmm. um, he has like writing on his shoe. I don't know if you guys have seen them, the dunks. It has, sometimes has a zipper on it. It has a writing on the sides, say shoelace or Nike or Air. Mm -hmm. They did that on the Louis Vuitton shoes and like they charged $5,000 for it. It's one of one. Yeah. And we actually saw it being built. It was crazy. Nice. So um so yeah, we saw the I saw the quality, I see, you know, they have the materials, everything there. So I'm I'm more confident in my product now. And not only that, um they do product packaging. So now okay. when I give you a box I can put like a note, I can put like custom sleeves, I can awesome. change the whole box to leather and yeah. just whole different feel. Um so I th I think you kinda answered the question I was gonna ask you next, which is like it was I was gonna say what are your future plans? Mm -hmm. But it looks like short term it's um obviously working with um Ubique. And um, or is it Ubiq or is it UBIQ? What would you People say? People say Ubiq. Yeah. Um, Ubiq Life. I say UBIQ because I, I feel like those those letters mean something. But yeah. I'm not, I'm not too sure. Yeah. So um, so it seems like short term is working with them and trying and getting um this new collection um out to the high end retailers. Right. Um, what would you say long term? Uh, long term plans for the brand. Long term plan for like the, my brand. I want to remain prominent in the high-end um, market, and I want to be able to have my brand expand so vastly that I'm able to help communities and help kind of my country, Liberia, of course. But right. um, uh, I want I want it just to be a successful brand. I don't really care to be in stores because what I've learned. There's this guy. His name is Blake Ricciato, and um, he reached out to me like years ago for my my shoes. He wanted to buy my shoes and sell them inside his store under his brand. I was like, oh, this is a big opportunity, but I don't want to be, I don't want anybody to own my brand but my me. So um, I turned him down. But he was like, you know, one thing when he started out with his brand, his brand is called Popular Demand, and it's really big. It's on Fairfax in L.A. and everything. So he's big time. But um, one thing he told me like. When he started out, his he just wanted to be inside a store. If he could say he his brand was inside a store, he felt like he accomplished something, you know. And he got his brand in the store stores. He's like, but he one thing to, he had to sell it. Yeah, and one thing, one thing. Um, no, he don't. He kept his brand. He, he kept, kept his it? brand. Yeah. Okay. When you when you sell, you're talking about selling, I thought you were talking about the store. But um, one thing he learned is that if the people do not know of your brand, and your brand is inside a store. The only thing you're gonna get is full traffic, right? And if people come in and they don't know your brand, they're just gonna walk right past it, you know. And those that people that you do get customers, you know, it's gonna be few because they don't know that you're there, you know. Mm -hmm. So he's like the most impactful way, um, impactful way his, his brand developed, you know, moved on to that next stage is online. He said once he got um, connected with uh, Karma Loop and Jack Threads and them, like his his profits skyrocketed, you know, because you not only have the United States, you have all the countries in the yeah, world, you online. know, that's all. So he's like, focus on getting online, you know, selling online and, you know, going from there. That's why most of the, on Bloomdale's or Nordstrom or any um, high-end place you see, there's a lot of brands on there, there are a lot. Right. And many you don't see their stores anywhere. Right. But those people are successful though. That's because they're online, yeah. you know, online sales, just get them money. Yeah. So, who um, do you have any um, like who's, I guess your mentors? Who's your inspirations right now? Um, and are any of them Liberian? Do you have any um, you know Liberian design or just anybody that's like really inspiring you to yeah. build up the brand? Um, as far as mentors, I have my cousins. Um, I, th I think I'd be living in living in New York, I didn't really have a lot of family around me. Um, it was just. They're like my aunts, a few uncles, and they're like old heads, you know. So, I, um, and it's just like the, my neighborhood, my block, you know. And that's it. That's those. That's was my influence. And yeah. then um, uh, I came down here, and I realized I have like thirty million cousins, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know. So with all of them, each each of them um, 
attributed to who I am now, you know. So this one taught me, like before when I came to New York, I was always in fights. And because of that, like I, my mom put me in boxing. I did a mixed martial arts. I did, so you I did fight, everything. at least yeah. they get into it. Yeah, <laughs> to the point I was doing amateur fights and everything. But um, I was always fighting before I got here. And when I got here, I was always upset, waiting for to fight somebody. Mm-hmm. You know, it, it's like people would look at me, and I'm like, you know, what Which you stand? Yeah. <laughs> and then instantly I would want to fight. But people are just like, you know, they chill down here. You know, yeah. so um, they got me to understand different concepts of how you should live your day. You know, wake up positive in a positive mind state, and continue living on like that. You'll have, you'll be good. I was like. This garbage, man. But let me just try it out to see, you know. Yeah, so I was like, some cool like Yeah, I've never not like this before, <laughs> <laughs> you know. But um, once I started doing that, it's just you know, my whole entire life just changed, you know. And they're my mentors as far as my uh per- persona, like who I am, yeah, you know. Um, but as far as business wise, I look up to 50 Cent. And before I even became a business mogul, you know, 50 is from the same place I'm from, mm-hmm. you know, Southside Jamaica. Oh, 50 Queens. got that attitude, too. Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> like, I, I, my, my father is in Liberia, you mm-hmm. know, he was one of the military people in Liberia. Okay. And um, I was only here because my uncle was, like, the treasurer of, my grandfather's the treasurer of Liberia. Mm-hmm. So, um, you know, the United States brought us here. Yeah. Not, um, but, <clears throat> like, I didn't have a father figure, really. I have a few uncles, but I don't. I already knew that they weren't my father, you know. Yeah, because your dad was in Liberia. Right, mm-hmm. right. So, um, uh, when I was growing up, Fifty was like my father figure, you know. So, I would I would get in a lot of trouble because of that, you know. But I'd also understand the, the hustle mindset of Fifty, you know, and I understand like uh, the people, the guys around me, they weren't some of the best guys, but. That was my clique, and we always functioned well together, you know. And then as I grew up, so did 50, you know. And then he would, he, he has, like, a lot of business ventures that most people don't know about, you know. And you know, he grew up from, like, uh, a little boy to a kid that's always in the streets getting problems to uh, a big-time drug dealer, you know, to a rapper, to just a business entrepreneur, yeah. you know, yeah. you know, so he's killing it. Yeah, he's central, like his own dumb, mm-hmm. like he's, station now, man. Yeah, he, like he has a lot of ventures, right. business ventures, and he's just like Diddy. I mean, I don't really personally like Diddy. I don't, something shady about Diddy. I, I just, I don't trust Diddy basically. <laughs> but I mean, he's my client, so mm-hmm. you know what it is. But um, uh, fifty, fifty is fifty is a type of person like. I feel he's really blunt. You know, how, what he thinks about you, he will tell you in your face mm-hmm. without, you know, hesitating. And it's not, it has to be necessarily him being a big person, like, you know, trying to be too dominant, but he is a dominant person. Mm-hmm. Um, it's just him giving you who he is. And I look up to 50, and that's my one of my mentors. If I saw 50, at 50, Pharrell and Andre. Um, Pharrell, uh, Andre is my favorite artist as far as rap comes. Number one, and I mean, there's like, there's like Nas and you know, all them. But um, uh, fifty as far as business goes and everything, like an overall person, that's fifty. And then Andre, just like he he taught me how to think out of the box. Mm-hmm. You know, he, that dude's weird, but yeah. it's it's weird. But he like he knows how to make it work for him. It's you just know like what's Prince. so crazy about, and I don't want to um, like talk too much about the whole like Kanye thing or whatever, but it, you do bring up some like, um, like w- even when you say 50, 50 um, says, 50 says things that, 50's kind of mean. Yeah. Um, I'm just, I'm just going to just, just get it out there. Yeah. 50's mean. <laughs> he says kind of like fucked up things sometimes. Mm-hmm. Um, but like, but at the but bottom line is, it's like he's saying kind of what everyone else is thinking, mm-hmm. um, but he's just not afraid to say it. And then also, um, but like, but he has that business acumen to him, you know what I mean? And um, I guess the same thing for like, you know, like you said, Andre's weird, you know what I mean? Like he kind of does it his way, you right. know? Um, how, and then for, I guess, the Kanye, you know what I mean? He says things that people don't like and stuff like that. But I think from what I gather from you is that you kind of like that, you know what I mean? So like, are, do, would you say, and, and low key, like you just said, Diddy's your client, but you think... Right. 
you you don't yeah. trust them you know yeah. what i mean so like what do you think now about like how like um because you you love social media in terms of it's, it's good it builds up your brand your it's, it's that exposure but what do you think as like a as an artist and um as a designer moving forward um how much you're like do you think about your voice like the things that you say are you are you nervous about that or are you going to kind of keep that since 50 you looked up to him he says what he he, he talks that shit mm-hmm. and he don't care you know what i mean do you think that because you're, you know, like, this is a podcast. You're getting out there. Your your brand is growing. You're going to be doing yeah. tons more interviews and stuff like that. Like, how are you going to, um, how do you think you're going to portray yourself? Um, when, when it comes to, down to me, uh, I'm a cancer. I don't know if that's going to say anything yeah. to what I was saying to say, but like, I'm very caring. And, you know, but I'm very emotional. And I also hide a lot. Of my. I don't like people knowing who I am if I don't know you, you know, so... Um, for me to be vulnerable around somebody, you really don't get that from me. So many times when people like uh, see celebrities um, just go off on people, I don't do that. You know, I'm, that's not my. I don't like to t- people to dictate how my emotions are gonna be. You know, so with me, I'm really content. If if as long as they don't they don't hurt me in any type of way, me or my family or anything, I don't care. You know, I'll go right past it. You know. But when it comes down to me, I'm, I'm, I think I'm very arrogant, but not in like a disrespectful way. Uh, like when it comes down to things that I don't like, <laughs> I don't like, or I see. This. Like when I was younger, I used to have um, these friends. They used to get always get picked on, <laughs> and uh, you know, by this one kid, his name is. Uh, his name, his name doesn't matter. But uh, he, he used, to, they used, to, he used to always come in and bully them all the time. I was like, why don't y'all say something? Why don't y'all do something? And they never did. And you know, I got upset this one time because he just went off. It was way too much. So I said, okay. And I, I got up and I punched him in his face. I punched him in his face. I said, look, from here on out, you're gonna need to leave him alone. They didn't say anything. They didn't do anything. But he stopped. And like from that point on, yeah. there's none of that Great. thing. And that's how I feel like I, I approach business. Like, if I feel like you don't have me in your best interest, as far as when it comes down to you know uh, negotiations, then I'm not going to do work with you, and I'm going to tell you. And um, like, I, I w- from here on out in my business, I want to control 100 percent of my company. I don't want anybody having a percentage of anything. You know. The thing is, is that. Um, and I know you have like your your okay. So do you know you know um Rich Den Rich Lou Dennis? He is a Liberian and he is the CEO of Shea Moisture. Yeah, um, yeah. So um, what do you? Th- I mean like, and there was a lot of backlash for that. Like with like the people who started with him from the beginning, and then when he you know um like other people bought into him, they were like, oh, the product's changing and stuff like that. But look at the growth. You know what I mean? Um, do you? You're totally against it. Like, no one's buying into your brand. It's not happening. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> People, this is, this is, you see, I, I say that now, and maybe that's just the um, immaturity, like, uh, it's just that that's within me right now. But, uh, um, but I feel as though every business at a certain point needs to take that step to go to the next level. Yeah. But you have to evaluate that step before you take it. You have to understand your risks, your losses, and how you're going to grow from there. You know, every company doesn't necessarily have to be owned by another person or another party. You can be successful if you just take the time. Like, uh, for example, um, Snapchat. You know, if you take your time, Snapchat and Instagram, uh, they built a product, both of them, you know. And there's Facebook, who is the most prominent product at that time. Everybody's going to be taken over at some point in time. Facebook got taken over by, um, MySpace got taken over by uh, Facebook. It's because while you're growing, you have to understand. Evolve. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you, you got to stay yeah. versatile. MySpace didn't do that. Yeah. And Facebook saw an opportunity, Definitely. and that, that that's where that landed. Yeah. Instagram saw also the same thing. Yeah. But you don't, just because people th- throw money at you, that doesn't mean you have to accept it Absolutely. at that time. Yeah. You know, there's this. Uh, I forgot. I forgot the boxer's name, and I forgot the scenario. But there's this guy. He was offered, um, like let's say, a million dollars, right? Or two hundred million dollars for one fight. Or I want you. The other option was like five million dollars per fight. So when you present somebody something like that to somebody who hasn't had it before, they jump the gun and instantly think that this product right here is what's going to keep me and my family good, you know. So he took that option. 
the first fight, you got put up against the biggest person, and you got hit, and like he suffered a lot, and he wasn't able to come back into boxing, and that totally ended his career, you know. But as he could have taken another fight, he could have taken a lot of fights that he would have dominated over and over, you know. And within four fights, you know, he would have had no, well, not four fights, but forty or forty more fights, he would have had the same amount. You know, and with way less. It, it, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. So it, it, it's all about, you know, where you plan to go. Okay. Um, you know, if you understand the market, you understand your brand, you know, you, sometimes being given a percentage of your company is good for you. Yeah. Um, you know, or sometimes it's not. You know, you just have to understand, like, what's your next move and where yeah. you're going to go. I feel right now that's not going to happen, you know. Because I, um, on another hand, I don't know if you guys know Jerry Lenzo, but he's the founder of uh, Fear of God. And he makes um, these shoes that kind of look like a little bit like my shoe, but um, he charges them 1500 1500 a shoe. Now, he's a brand, but if he wants, he can, he already has the backing, right? He has the f- support from the streetwear community. If he wants, he can just keep putting $1,500 shoes out for the rest of his life, you know, and he will be successful. But if he wants to become like a billionaire, you have to be versatile again, you know, and switch up. You know, if you want to live on for years, you have to switch up again. But if you want to just be good for your, like your generation, for you right now, you don't have to do much. You yeah. Know? So it depends on what your direction is and how you decide to take that. Definitely. So um, I'm just to wrap it up, but I know that um, a lot of the podcasts we've done and a lot of the entrepreneurs that we've spoken to, um, they talk about like you know. And you said this earlier that you like doing collaborations, um, but they're like you know like I guess within like Liberians how you know they feel like oh Liberians don't want to like um, like they're like reach out if you know if you want to do something if you like let's work together that's the only way like when 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 one does well we all do well we're, we're building up you know like our country and more people are gonna learn about us and you know it's only gonna help um, so what would you say um, to other um, I guess other entrepreneurs out there um, in terms of um, the Sean Collins brand and collaborations. Uh, whether you're a librarian, I'm always willing to work with librarian people. Period. Um, <clears throat> with, with me, I I like to break down a lot of the businesses that I see. Um, there's there's a like on Instagram, for example, there's this girl that that uh, there's a girl that uh, has her own well now her own restaurant, but she cooks food and her own food venture and uh this is a girl with makeup this is a girl with uh lotions and this is a guy with like uh djing these are all people that i'm looking out from the outside looking and i see potential in them so for that reason i want to help them you know because i i can see if they have that neck that little handout you know that most of us don't have the opportunity to have like they could go to that next step you know so like i, I see the potential and i see what what i can offer them and that's why it's like like when it comes down to people collaborating with me, I look and see like wh- where your mind is at, and look. I try to assist you in, I in me trying to help you get to that that next step, you know. So <clears throat> I evaluate companies. I see if it is possible that I can help you. If it's not, then I tell you. I give you advice. You know, this is what I think should you should do based on that. Like I like with Crystal, like her work is amazing. You know, she does it. You know her. Uh, herself cut and sew she's she's self-taught too you know mm-hmm. so there's many people that go to school you know learn fashion design and they suck you know but <laughs> she learned that all on her own yeah. being an that na- entrepreneur natural talent yeah and like it's great And but the only thing that's lacking is like her marketing her marketing and branding mm-hmm. so it, it's just like well to me I feel, I feel that's like the simplest thing you know because I'm, I'm used to it you know I used to deal with other companies before so when I look at her you know, I was like okay when I'm going to help somebody, I, I look at it, how can I bring value to you? You know, it's not too much of how can I, um, what can Benefit. I gain, gain for yeah. you? Mm-hmm. So I, I look at her brand and see, okay, well, this is where I can see your brand, you know, and this is what I can you know, do for you. That's and from there, you know, um, right now we're about to get in the studio, do the photo shoot and everything for her. And after that, once we have our lookbook, we create 
um, like a book for her so she can take around to different clientele. And just, but I'm gonna take that lookbook and I'm gonna send it that to my my stylist, yeah. and See, they're gonna do pulls. Librarians yeah. helping librarians, and you yeah. know what I mean. You you have those connections, and you're not being selfish with yeah. it. And um, there's no like it's it's no competition. Like we can all do well. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean. So yeah. that's amazing. That, I mean, and I was that was with uh, her. Just, she's librarian, but. Here in DC too, I mean, I do it a lot too with um, people that are not know, librarians. You know, just this. Uh, I have this friend's name is Dante, and on Instagram he's Wizzle X, and he makes these jackets like like flower, flower cover with flowers or the colorful, and uh, and um, like he he's done clothing that's been him, you know. But and he himself had a contract with Adidas to make sneakers, and that contract had ended. And when that contract had ended, I was making shoes, and he was like. He reached out to me. He was like, hey, man, um, I see you making shoes. Can you help me out? I'm trying to. I was like, all right, cool. I mean, because, like, to me, my designs, my concepts are always going to be great. That's how I feel in my head. You always have to be confident of your product, mm-hmm. you know. So, for me, I don't I don't feel like he was going to be my competition. So, if, because I feel that way, is is and it, he doesn't even, not, not to say he has to be my competition. I have to look at, uh, we're, we're competing. But I just feel as though I'm confident in my product. That if I help this person, I can it can assist them, but it won't hurt me, right. you know. So all my contacts, you know, that I had at that time, I gave to him, and he made three shoes from them. They were all successful, right. you know. And he says thank you. And then I recently, um, he was doing jackets again and different other different concepts, but he wants to get back into footwear. So he, again, he reached out to me, and now we're we're working on producing a collaboration, you know, going from there. So. To me, I don't. I don't mind helping people, awesome. you know, because it's. Yeah. Yeah, um, and a lot of people think that you know they're like you know like oh like they see you they probably follow you on Instagram and things like that and they probably you know want to reach out but you know they probably like what, what I've been noticing is just that um, entrepreneurs always say that like you know like yeah let's all try to build each other up but I guess you know people just seem so far removed that um, it's not there but um, great to know that um, I'm super proud of that we have a Liberian that um, is doing the awesome work that you're doing um, keep it up we're all rooting for you and um for and i'm glad that you know the people who had who weren't familiar with your brand um can now get to know it and then also who were familiar with your brand have now gotten to know you a little bit more so um can you just tell everybody how to follow you um online social media everything um on instagram i'm at sean collins that's sean with a c c h a u n c o l l i n s um, Twitter, same thing. I rarely get on Twitter, so <laughs> I don't do a lot of talking. So Twitter, no Twitter fingers. Yeah, Twitter's not my fan, my <laughs> my platform. But um, and then on uh, my website, www.seancollins.com, and uh, I think that's all the social media I have. You know? Awesome. All right, so yeah, check them out online and on social media. And also, as per usual, um, if you share this episode, we're going to have some really cool stuff for you from the brand. Um, so, yep, uh, follow him, um, repost, Sean. Um, make sure to tag all of us at Sean Collins, at 231 Media, and at Culture Crew Podcast. Until next time.